I'm still waiting, Pierre. Like, when is it going to happen? Yes, people, welcome to Chance to Target, a place where we take a look at all the potential chances and we rank them. Dreamland, definitely maybes, and the dead certs. This week, we take a look at FA Cup winners, Arsenal, and we are joined by Arsenal fan and presenter, Pippa Moni. <laughs> Pippa, how are you feeling after Arsenal season? I wouldn't say we're happy. Like We're not over the moon, but if we forget about the, the league, the raise that for my memory, winning the FA Cup is one... It's bragging rights, really. OK, so starting off, we look at Dreamland. Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid. Reports are saying that he's already agreed personal terms. That's the one I've been waiting for. And I don't know why, but it feels like it's not happening anymore. But I'm hearing all these rumours that, you know, there's been agreements, four-year deals. I'm hoping it happens because there seems to be a lot of rumours elsewhere that our core of the midfield might be leaving or there'll be swap deals going on. So we need to bring reinforcement. And Thomas Partey looks like a solid midfielder that we will need. And I, I signed him in my career mode, so I know what he, I know what he can do virtually. So hopefully he can do that in real life as well for Arsenal because we need that. We need a defensive midfielder. We need to. We need reinforcement in the defence altogether. So if we start there, defensive mid, and hopefully get creative mid, Thomas Partey needs to come. It needs to happen. So the next signing, Fabrizio Romano, the king of the transfer window at the moment, Philippe Coutinho has been offered to Arsenal. I've been saying we need a creative midfielder. Ever since Ozil wasn't getting played regularly, um, I didn't know the future of Danny Ceballos and he wasn't playing that well at the time. I was like, listen, Philippe Coutinho was available at the time. I felt like he was in that January transfer window because he wasn't wanted at his club. I know you're going to say it's dreamland, but I think Arsenal need a player like that. Next up, the definitely maybes. Apparently, you have beaten Napoli in the race to sign Lille defender Gabriel. He looks ready, and I'm just imagining him pairing with Saliba next season, centre back. Amazing. I, I just feel like, don't knock me for this, but you know, a young Virgil van Dijk might be coming through. We've got to make bold statements sometimes. Remember, I said it. And finally, these are the dead certs. It's going to start with William. Undoubtedly a classy player, but for a fan, what's your vibe on Arsenal signing someone rumoured to be in the excess of 220,000 per week Ooh. when the club has just let 55 staff go? I just thought it was ridiculous to hear that a club as big and as great as Arsenal Football Club cannot afford to keep 55 members of staff. I could go on for hours talking about this, about the pay cuts where the players, some players, especially Ozil, refused to take it early on. You know, players are probably thinking, oh, I'm on 100k a week and I'm living a life and then the lady that I see every morning at the training ground, I'm probably not going to see her ever again because she's lost her job. Because why? Why? How does that make yeah. sense? But then we bring in another player who I'm actually glad to see him come in. It's bittersweet and it still doesn't make sense to me, to be honest. I don't know how the business is being run at Arsenal Football Club and I don't know if I'll ever know. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, contract extension at Arsenal. I feel like we've been talking about it for a very long time. <sighs> um, it's yet to be completed. How important is it that Aubameyang says? So, so important. It's even more important because you know, we've been talking about all the possible transfers that could be coming to Arsenal and none of them are forward. So if he was to leave, what on earth are we going to do? Because that's where all the goals have come from. Not all, but majority of all the goals. Um, he's the one that's pretty much saved us from finishing even lower in the table because if it wasn't for those goals scored, some of the results we saw in, in that season could have seen us finish 12th, 13th. I, beg to, I don't even want to imagine. So he is so important. He's crucial for Arsenal Football Club. And you say it's going to be announced any day soon, but we've been saying that for the last two, three weeks now. So I'm still waiting, Pierre. Like, when is it going to happen? Now, here is BBC Sports correspondent George Cummings with his thoughts on Arsenal's potential dealings this summer. Well, the Arsenal captain's just returned from a family holiday in Milan, where he went to see his brother. He went with his dad, also called Pierre, who was his agent for his move to Arsenal in January 2018. Well, why does this all matter? They're probably back in London now, talking through the final details of the contract he's been offered. Philip Coutinho. Could Arsenal afford his transfer fee? Probably not, so loan's the best option. Arsenal have one advantage over other clubs. His agent is Keir Jarabjin, who happens to be the agent of David Luiz, and Willian, Arsenal's other new signing. So, a loan is probably the best bet for this one, but it also may be dependent on the future of Danny Ceballos and Meza Ozil. How will Arsenal line up come the beginning of next season? Pippa, thank you so much for coming on. And as always, everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for checking out the BBC Sport YouTube channel. Remember to give this video a like and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you never miss an upload. See you soon.